Welcome, humans, and any celestial body else out there listening. This is Curious Minds Infinite Answers. I'm your host, Courtney Christine Costco. This podcast, simply put, is a mix of human curiosity and how, with the help of AI technology, curious minds can get the answers we seek. Let's get mind bending and plunge deep beneath the surface of our everyday thoughts. Let's begin. There's something I want you to imagine with me for a moment. Not anything you can touch or name. I want you to imagine the world before form. Before matter arranged itself into trees, oceans, planets, and people. Before sound, before color, before identity. Physicists call this the unified field theory a foundational layer where everything that exists is still just energy and potential. At that level, there are no borders, no separations, no big or small, no important or insignificant, just vibration. Barely microscopic trembling strings of energy dancing in different frequencies becoming the particles that make up every single thing you have ever loved or ignored or stepped over or stood in awe of. There's a beautiful truth here. Everything is connected because everything is made of the same thing. Different notes from the same cosmic instrument. And when you see life through that lens, a new kind of reverence emerges. Because suddenly, every expression of existence, from the vastness of galaxies to the smallest living beings, has meaning, purpose, and value. And that's what I want to explore today. The idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And that life, even the tiniest forms of it, carries a significance we often overlook. To help us understand this truth, I want to turn our attention to one of the planet's smallest yet most essential creatures, a being most people step over without a second thought, and yet its contribution to our world is enormous. Today, we're learning from the ant because sometimes the biggest lessons come from the smallest things. Now that we're grounded in the idea of unity and vibration, let's shift our attention beneath us into a world that exists centimeters below our feet, but remains invisible to our eyes. Underneath the surface of the earth is a universe of motion. Tunnels, chambers, passageways carved with precision by beings no larger than a grain of rice. These aren't random burrows, they're cities, living, breathing infrastructures that ants create with instinctive intelligence to support the land above. Their digging softens hardened soil, allowing oxygen to pass where it otherwise couldn't. The pathways they create let rainwater travel deeper, nourishing roots that would never reach those depths on their own. This simple, continuous motion supports entire ecosystems, its engineering, its stewardship, its purpose, embedded in a tiny body that most of us overlook. As they move through these networks, ants collect leaves, broken twigs, seeds, and the remains of other insects. They carry these items underground, where everything they gather decomposes into nutrient-rich soil. That soil becomes the foundation on which forests and plants thrive. And we don't see any of it. Yet, we benefit from all of it. Ants aren't just surviving on Earth. They're participating in Earth. They're building it, sustaining it, maintaining it every day. This is the first reminder they offer us. You don't have to be big to have a big impact. Imagine a forest after a wildfire. 
blackened branches, the smell of smoke lingering in the soil, a silence that feels like loss. Nature has its own way of healing, but the process often begins in places we never think to look. The first agents of rebirth are often the ants. Many plants rely on ants, specifically to transport their seeds to safety. Seeds with tiny fatty attachments are irresistible to ants. They carry them underground, consume the nutritious part, and leave the seed behind in a protected, nutrient-rich pocket of soil. Hidden, safe, ready to grow. And from that secret space beneath the earth, a new stem emerges. A new leaf unfurls. A forest begins again. Ants don't just live in ecosystems. They restart them. They ensure continuity. They ensure resilience. Once again, reminding us, the whole is greater because the smallest parts are doing their quiet, essential work. Ants occupy a delicate, powerful position in the global food web. They're predators, keeping pests like termites, aphids, and caterpillars from overwhelming environments. And they are prey, feeding birds, reptiles, amphibians, and other small mammals. They sit at this central, often invisible crossroads, and their presence stabilizes the entire structure. If you could view Earth's ecosystem as a woven tapestry, ants would be one of the primary threads holding everything together. They're not flashy, they don't demand attention, but without them, whole sections of that tapestry would begin to unravel. And isn't that true of so many parts of the human world too? It's rarely the loudest people or the most recognized roles that hold everything together. It's the quiet consistency, the unseen labor, the persistent effort. Ants mirror that back to us in the simplest, purest way possible. But ants don't just build and nourish their world. They also protect it in ways that reveal a kind of intelligence we don't often attribute to insects. Ants don't understand life or death the way humans do but it's fascinating to understand how their species processes it nonetheless. When a member of their colony dies, ants recognize it almost immediately through chemical signals released by the body, especially the scent of oleic acid. And what they do next is astonishing. Certain ants take on the role of undertakers. They gently pick up the deceased and carry the body far from the nest to a designated midden a kind of cemetery or waste site where it can no longer spread disease or threaten the health of the colony. This behavior has a scientific name, necrophoresis. But beneath the science, there is something quietly profound about it. Even in death, their actions are about care for the whole, not the individual. It is the unity field expressed through biology the smallest lives acting as guardians of the collective. It's a sort of hygiene, yes, but it's also a reminder that every community, no matter how small, has rituals of care. And that caring for the health of the whole is built into the fabric of life itself. Before we continue, I want to honor someone who has brought this tiny world into the awareness of millions. Mikey Bustos, the creator of Ants Canada, he began his life in the public eye as a singer. You may remember him from Canadian Idol. But what stayed with him, what kept whispering to him after the music faded, was a fascination with ants that started in childhood. Over the years, he built a YouTube channel with nearly 7 million followers using storytelling, humor, and an authentic sense of wonder to show us the secret civilizations living beneath our feet. People tune in by the millions, to watch his colonies build, grow, escape, and navigate their tiny worlds. He didn't just make ant keeping popular, he made curiosity cool. Because when someone takes something the rest of the world steps over and reveals it to be miraculous, they remind us of a truth we often forget. Life is extraordinary when we are willing to notice it. Here's something incredible ants affect. Ants also affect the climate. Their decomposition work cycles carbon back into the earth, 
Their tunnels help landscapes retain moisture. Their constant churning stabilizes the ground beneath us. They are the underground lungs of the planet, a circulatory system we never see but depend on every day. It's humbling to realize that something this small has an influence this big. And yet, we do what we do when ants show up in our kitchen. We panic, we stomp, we spray, we destroy. We forget because we don't see the connections. We forget because we don't see the strings that tie their lives to ours. But science does, nature does, the unity field does. If everything is vibration, if everything emerges from the same source, then stepping on an ant isn't just stepping on a creature. It's ignoring a thread in the fabric of life you yourself are woven into. And yes, there are fire ants, there are biting ants, ants that defend themselves fiercely. But isn't that true of us? We lash out when we're overwhelmed. We protect what we love. We are all responding to the same primal instincts in different bodies. In this way, ants don't just reflect nature, they reflect us. So what do ants teach us? That greatness isn't about size. That value isn't about visibility. That the smallest contributions can sustain the largest systems. They teach us that the whole is only whole because the smallest parts are doing their work. They teach us reverence, interdependence, teamwork, and humility. And they remind us that life doesn't need to be big to be meaningful. So the next time you see an ant crossing your path, pause. Don't brush it away. Don't dismiss its purpose. Remember, everything you see, everything you touch, everything you are, began as the same vibration in the same unified field. We are connected in ways we can't always see. And sometimes the smallest hands carry the weight of the world. So maybe be like the ant. Be gentle. Be purposeful. Be someone whose presence quietly supports the world around you. And I know some of you are not going to listen to me when I say this, but maybe just try. The next time a small creature crosses your path, a bug on the counter, a spider in the corner, an ant exploring your kitchen floor, pause before you react. Remember that this tiny being is just trying to live out the short existence it was given. Its entire life may only last days or weeks at most. Why rob it of the little time it has or the role it plays in the greater design of our world? Instead of the instinct to stomp, Try the instinct to understand. Instead of destruction, try compassion or empathy. Instead of fear, find the wonder in its existence. To the best of your ability, gently escort it outside. Let it continue its work, its purpose, its small but sacred contribution to the ecosystem we all share. Because when we choose kindness toward even the smallest expressions of life, we honor the unity we all come from. The same vibrating field of energy that created you, me, and every creature that walks, crawls, or flies across this earth. Sometimes the smallest hands carry the greatest lessons and the most meaningful compassion is shown to those who are easiest to overlook. Thank you for being here in this moment. Until we meet again. Thank you for tuning in to Curious Minds, Infinite, Infinite Answers. I'm Courtney Christine Koskin, and I hope you'll join me for next week's episode as we proceed down the path of curiosity and discovery, uncovering various topics along the way. If you have any comments or want answers to your burning curiosities, drop me a line in the comments below. Until we meet again, find the good in the world, and if you can't find it, be the good.